afternoon everyone. My name is Neharika. I'm your friend, your next door neighbor, your babysitter, or I'm the girl who sat in front, of, front row of the class. I'm your sister, I'm your daughter, and today I'm here to speak on an issue that has left me truly appalled. Because who knows, it also could have been me instead of her. Thousands of people have been protesting all day in New Delhi, as they have been all week since the gang rape of the woman riding a private bus, and in whose honor we all have gathered here. Dozens of activists have been injured and officially, officials are pleading for us to be calm. How can we remain calm when a young girl just like me has undergone such a beastly act and now is no more? Her struggle may have ended, but ours has just begun. So who is to blame, we ask? It is not one individual factor that has led to, to, to the way women are treated in India or around the world. It's because of the deeply entrenched patriarchal mindset Widespread, widespread misogyny, gender inequality, backward upbringing, lack of education and awareness that has brought about these atrocities on women. Gender, gender segregation still resides in most of India and starts very early. Gender roles and stereotypes are enforced at birth, causing them to become internalized by both men and women. Viewing birth of a son as winning the reproductive lottery and daughters as merely a financial and more moral burden is what's weighing our society down. <coughs> Education and proper upbringing plays a pivotal role in teaching everyone, be it a man or a woman, that women are equal to men. And they also deserve to be respected and live a dignified life. We don't want to hear a defensive argument that, oh, women only leave home for work. Poor things, what can they do? They're compelled to go out. We believe that regardless of whether a woman is inside or outside, whether it's day or night, for whatever reason, however she may be dressed, Women have a right to freedom, and that freedom without fear is what we need to protect, to guard, and respect. Women do not have to change the way they live to feel safe. I'm sorry, but we reject this notion. We don't want it. Why is it that approximately 40,000 cases of sexual assault are pending before courts across India, and why is the conviction rate to be only 25%? Most offenders are out on bail and have not been punished for the crime they have committed. How can we expect law and order when our judicial legislation is weak and ignorant? We demand justice not just for all the wake vi rape victims, but better laws and stringent action against all sexual uh, offenders per se to prevent social such crimes in future. These offenders need to be shown how their lives will suffer once they commit these crimes. Women shouldn't be blamed or suppressed, rather they should be encouraged to come and speak against these offenders. Rape is still not seen as a men's issue, and I don't think many people are asking that question yet of how men are being brought up and how it shapes their attitude towards rape. Until men or our people, our families, ourselves undergo some sort of socio-cultural metamorphosis and there's a change in the psyche and the mindset of us, the women won't be safe from the men. Even though India is known as the world's largest democracy and is inching towards being a superpower in the, economy, in the economic world playground, Indian women still continue to live in fear. These crimes are not just limited to India, but prevails in all parts of the world, and we need to speak up now to support women, protect them, and make a change. A change needs to be brought up upon our upbringing, justice system, and mainly on our mindsets in order to prevent such crimes. It's us women who have given birth and created this world. Respect, freedom, and dignity is our birthright, and we'll fight for it. Thank you for being here with me today. Thank you. Thank you. Time for change. Time for change. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. enough.